All right, so let's start this off by creating that uh, base rigid body script. All right, and like I said, I like to do this just because it separates kind of the responsibilities of the classes. You know, this base rigid body script is going to be responsible for setting up and just getting the rigid body up and running. I like uh, doing things like weight conversion and just checking to see if it's even there, first off. And then the, you know, the drone controller is going to handle um, controlling the actual drone and doing all the you know, banking and rolling and pitching and yawing and all that stuff. So let's uh, jump into Unity and get started. All right, so let's go over into the code folder and into our scripts folder and let's make a new script. And I'm going to call this IP um, drone, or actually we're going to call this uh, base uh, rigid body. I got ahead of myself there for a second. I also want to change the little icon um, on my scripts just to, to note that you know they're my scripts instead of just the default C sharp scripts. So um, if you go and look into that zip folder that I included with this particular course, this mini course, uh, there's this any pixel icon. Now you can use that if you want. Uh, I just ask that you don't use it in your regular work that you might sell or um, you know, I would highly recommend just making your own icon. It's really simple. It's just a 32 pixel by 32 pixel image. But uh, let's drag and drop this into the editor here, editor folder. All right. And let me show you guys how to set up that little icon. So it's really easy. You just select the script that you want to change. And then you go to hit the little icon on it over here in the inspector and then select the other button. And then just go look for the particular texture. So I just typed in indie up here. And that comes up with the indie pixel icon and then you just kind of click off of it and it'll go and update the icon for you so just a nice little you know customized thing to do for your scripts makes it feel like a pro at least um, again yeah i highly recommend making your own but i just wanted to show that too they also show up inside of uh the uh editor or the scene editor and they they actually become selectable too so uh, really cool stuff and that actually reminds me i should turn this guy back up here like so there we go all right cool so uh let's do our, our base rigid body so i'm going to double click that to open it up into visual studio 2019 and let's take care of our namespace just like we usually do so we'll say any pixel like so and remember this particular script is really just responsible for dealing with the rigid body all right and just getting things set up just so we don't have you know a bunch of rigid body based controllers in our project and they all have their own functionality to set up a rigid body. We can just extend or inherit from this one particular script for all of our vehicles. All right. So I'm going to do a uh, require component and it's going to be a type of rigid body. So again, this will just make sure that the rigid body is actually assigned to our game object. Okay. So with that done, let's go and create a region. So I'm going to do uh, variables. Like so, and there's actually a way to set this up so you don't have to type this in. If you have a common um, setup that you always use for your particular scripts, like like I do, I always basically do this over and over again. Um, you you can actually there's a template file, and I just can't remember off off the top of my head what where it is. Um, it is in the Unity Engine folder. There's some temp file that you just need to update, uh, and that'll fix all this stuff up. Um, so. I'm sure you could Google it and it'll there's be like a million different um, resources about it. So, all right. So the first thing I want to do is I want to allow um, users uh, to assign uh, a weight to this. Okay. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm actually going to put a header here and I'm going to call this uh, rigid body properties. All right. So this is just a nice way to keep things organized in the, um, inspector okay and then i'm going to do a public oh actually let's just do this let's do a private float um weight in pounds and i'm going to set that to one let's we'll say you know these drones um are pretty light uh and it really depends on the type of drone obviously the larger they get the heavier they get all right so uh, i'm just going to initialize it to one pound um, but we made it private so this means it's not you know, accessible by other scripts, but it also means that it doesn't show up in the inspector, but we want to be able to change this in the inspector, but I don't want other classes to change this value. So we make it private and then we do the serialized field um, attribute. All right. And that basically makes it so it shows up in the, uh, the uh, inspector. All right. So 
Uh, the, we also need another private variable, and this is going to be the rigid body. So we're going to say rigid body. And I usually call that RB for short. All right. And what we need to do is right when the game starts, we need to assign this rigid body variable with the actual rigid body that's being attached by this required component. Okay. So to do that, uh, I'm actually going to change this void start to awake. So it, get, it gets called before all the start functions get called. Okay. So I'm ensuring that, you know, we're going to look for the rigid body first. All right. So we're going to say RB is equal to get component, and we're going to be looking for a rigid body that type. Okay. Cool. Awesome. So now we got that all set up. Uh, we're going to get the rigid body. So we could do some setup here with this weight in pounds. All right. And that basically means I want to allow users to set the, how much this weighs in pounds. Okay. And I'm just sticking to pounds because it's what I'm used to. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to uh, create a constant value. Okay. So I'm going to do a const. All right. And I am going to say, um, I'm going to call this particular variable. It's going to be a float. It's going to be called pounds to kilograms or kg. Okay. So if you're used to kilograms, then by all means, the, th the reason why I'm doing this is because unity by default works in kilograms, not pounds, but because I'm used to working in pounds, right? Uh, because, you know, just the, the region I live in, uh, basically, and how I was raised, <laughs> um, uh, I, I do this conversion. So you don't have to do this. That's my point. So the conversion is, um, to, we want to multiply whatever pounds we have here that's been assigned by the user by this uh, constant ratio value, basically. So 0 0.454. Okay. So let's do that. Let's take care of that now. Uh, we're going to go in here. We're going to say if um, RB, if we have a rigid body, basically, okay, then let's set the mass. So we're going to say RB.mass is equal to our weight in pounds times our pounds to kilograms conversion. All right. And you can look up if you have other conversions you want to do, you can look them up on Google. Uh, just type in, you know, whatever unit of measure you want to start in and the unit of measure you want to convert it to. And Google will tell you what the uh, conversion factor is. Okay, cool. So next thing I want to do is I want to, if we're going to be inheriting from this particular script, I want some sort of overridable function in here that uh, handles the actual physics processing. Okay. So, and we'll talk about overrides once we get to the drone controller. So what we want to do is we want to say if inside of our update function, and actually we need to set this to a fix update because we're working in physics. All right. So we're going to say if not RV. So if we didn't find a rigid body for some reason, it got uh, detached somehow or destroyed, uh, who knows, but you should always check for this. So if we don't have it, we should return and not execute any code below this particular statement here. Okay. So I'm going to say if not, rigid body. Okay. So if this is null, basically we're going to return. And so the fix update will just constantly be returning and no, any, any code below here won't be run. And the code that I want to uh, run down here is a function that I'm going to call handle physics. And I'm going to make this overridable. Okay. So you're going to get a red squiggly line there because we haven't actually implemented the handle physics. So let's do that now. So we're going to make another region. This is going to be uh, custom methods like so. We'll say end region like so. And then we'll say, um, we're going to say protected, right? Because I want to be able to, I want to protect this class, but I also want to have all um, classes that inherit from this base rigid body class to be able to, to uh, see this function. So I make it protected, not private. And I don't, I'm, I'm not making it public because I don't want any other script to see this. Okay. So we're going to say protected uh, virtual void. It's not going to return anything. It's virtual because we want to override it. All right. Meaning uh, the implementation and the other scripts are going to have its own set of code. Okay. We're going to say handle physics like so. And then our squiggly marks, our curly braces. Awesome. And we don't need to put anything in it because this script is not going to do anything with it. I just want to set it there. And then in the drone controller, we'll go and add the actual meat. Uh, or the code that goes in there. All right. So that is pretty much everything. I think the next thing I want to do, let's, um, let's actually create two more protected, uh, variables here. We really only need the weight in pounds to be exposed. So I'm going to do a protected, uh, start drag. All right. So this is a good idea to do. Um, 
and we actually need to give it a type, so this is going to be a float value. There we go. Uh, this is a good idea to do because uh, when you want to start to do um, dynamic drag, which you should, right, for some sort of physics-based um, object or vehicle, you want to update the drag as something is going faster, right? Obviously, the faster we're going, the more drag we're creating, right? Because we're, you know, having to force ourselves through uh, the air, basically, in, in the case of a drone. So you want to increase the drag. You don't want it just a constant drag. And that, that won't feel as realistic, right? Cool. So with these two uh, variables, uh, let's go and uh, assign it. So I'm going to say start drag is equal to whatever, you know, the drag has been set to in the inspector, all right? So that is if I go back into Unity over here and select the drone. Oh, we don't have a rich body. Uh, so I'll point that out once we finish up the script here. Uh, but it's basically whatever value um, is is set in the inspector there. So we'll say rb.angular drag. All right, we just want to initialize those values and make it protected so any you know class that's inheriting from the script has access to the uh, data and the, these variables. All right, so with that, we're pretty much good to go. So let's go back into Unity now and let's assign it to the drone and see all the awesomeness happen. So let's, uh, let's click and drag this over onto our drone and you can see it created a rigid body and we have the weight in pounds and our header. Look at that, nice and organized. Now, we're not actually going to be putting this base rigid body script. I really just want to put that on there just to show you guys how it works. Uh, we're going to, in the next lecture, we're going to create the drone controller which inherits from this base rigid body class. So it will also create the rigid body for us as well. Okay. So with that, let's close out the lecture and move on to the next.